the statue of Lucifer. Recently, comedian Bobby Lee and his friends reacted to a video I made two years ago on his podcast. In the video, I talk about the possibility that the Statue of Liberty could be a statue that's paying an homage to Satan. In that one minute video, I barely scratched the surface concerning this topic, so I don't blame anyone who doesn't consider the idea a possibility. Here we go. This is what I'm talking about. Let's right? hear it. It is actually a statue dedicated to Lucifer. The left, left is a painting made in the 17th century. Wow. Known as Satan summoning his legion. I'm in. Now the devil's original name in the Bible was known as Lucifer, Lucifer. or in Hebrew, Hillel, Hello. which means the light bearer or the bringer of light. Whoa, now, hold on. I'm in. holding a torch. It's bearing the light. I'm in. Now the Statue of Liberty looks awfully similar to the Colossus of Rhodes. And the Colossus of Rhodes was one of the ancient wonders of the world. It was a bronze Greek statue. It was about 108 feet tall. Ah, dude looks like he's wearing, wearing a, right there. He's wearing a diaper. He's wearing a diaper. He's holding a torch. This statue was dedicated to the Greek god Helios, the god of the sun, the god of the light. In fact, many Luciferians refer to the devil as the great light. And this painting of Satan summoning his legions looks awfully similar to the face of the Statue of Liberty. I mean, take a look. Looks pretty similar to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in! I'm, I'm in! I'm Since I have made that video, I have found a lot of detailed information about the Statue of Liberty possibly being an idol to the accuser. The Statue of Liberty is an American landmark visited by approximately 3.5 million people every year and is recognized internationally as a symbol of American ideals. According to the apparent historical narrative we have been given concerning the Statue of Liberty, it is a universal symbol of freedom, originally conceived as an emblem of the friendship between the people of France and the US, and a sign of their mutual desire for liberty. It was also meant to celebrate the abolition of slavery following the US Civil War. Over the years, the statue has become much more. It is the mother of exiles, greeting millions of immigrants and embodying hope and opportunity for those seeking a better life in America. It stirs the desire for freedom in people all over the world. It represents the United States itself. We have been given a bunch of narratives concerning who the Statue of Liberty is actually modeled after. The history books tell us that the original model may have been an Egyptian woman. Many historians say that the Statue of Liberty was modeled after Libertas, the Roman goddess of freedom. We have also been told that the sculptor Frederick August Bartholdi was first inspired by the colossal figures guarding Nubian tombs. Some historians even believe that it's an amalgamation of all of these. The Roman goddess Libertas, a peasant, and the extra inspiration in the artist's own mind. So who was the sculptor that designed the Statue of Liberty? And what was the actual purpose behind the statue? The sculptor behind the Statue of Liberty was a high-ranking Freemason named Frederick August Bartholdi, who was born in 1834 in Kalmar, France, in the Alsace region on the border of Germany. According to ScottishRite.org, the Statue of Liberty has Masonic origins and ties to Freemasonry. In fact, the Colossus in New York's harbor was conceived, financed, built, and installed by Freemasons. Nearly a hundred years after the end of the American Revolution in 1865, nearly 100 years after the end of the American Revolution in 1865, French political thinker and Freemason Edward de la Boule, who belonged to a Masonic lodge in Paris, proposed to France that the country gift a monument to the United States in commemoration of their diplomatic relations and to celebrate a century of freedom and democracy. Additionally, Freemason La Boulay and his comrades, which included the likes of Oscar and Edmond de Lafayette, grandsons of Marquis de Lafayette, Henry Martin, and a sculptor and Freemason Frederick August Bartholdi, had hoped that the gift would inspire their own French citizens to pursue democracy in France. 
The structural framework was provided by fellow Freemason and French civil engineer Gustave Eiffel, who would later become famous for designing the Eiffel Tower. Copper was chosen as the material of choice by Freemason Bartholdi, as it was among the least expensive material to construct with. The statue was then built by Freemason laborers of the Franco-American Union and was completed in 1885. The Statue of Liberty was then dismantled into 350 pieces and shipped overseas, arriving at Bedloe's Island soon after renamed to Liberty Island in June 1885. When Lady Liberty arrived in the United States, it was welcomed by American Freemasons. There was debate about what should be included in the cornerstone. The first stone set that all other stones will be set in reference to of the foundation of the monument. It had been an American tradition to have the cornerstone of major public and private buildings and monuments ceremoniously placed with symbolic meaning ever since Freemason George Washington in 1793 had personally laid the cornerstone of the Capitol with the assistance of the Grand Lodge of Maryland. As such, Chairman William M. Evarts of the American Committee contracted the Grand Lodge of Free and Accepted Masons of the State of New York and requested a Masonic ceremony appropriate to the occasion. When the cornerstone of the Statue of Liberty was laid, elements of a traditional Masonic ceremony were observed. A Grand Master provided a few words and the cornerstone was found to be square, level, and plumb. The Grand Master applied the mortar and had the stone lowered into place. He then struck the stone three times and declared it duly laid. Then the elements of consecration were presented. Corn, wine, and oil. There's a possibility that the Statue of Liberty is modeled after one of the ancient wonders of the world, the Colossus of Rhodes. The Colossus of Rhodes was a statue of the Greek sun god Helios, erected in the city of Rhodes on the Greek island of the same name. Helios is often depicted with a crown of solar rays above their heads. To be exact, there are seven almost always. Another is also visible in the form of a bronze bust, always with the seven rays from the top of their head. According to most contemporary descriptions, the Colossus stood approximately 70 cubits or 33 meters high, which would equal to 108 feet high, approximately the height of the modern Statue of Liberty from feet to crown, making it the tallest statue in the ancient world. The Colossus of Rhodes collapsed during a destructive earthquake in 226 BC. Besides the obvious similarities between Helios and the Statue of Liberty, such as both entities described as light bearers and bearing seven solar crowns above their heads, evidence for the Colossus of Rhodes being the possible inspiration behind the Statue of Liberty is found on a plaque located on the pedestal of the statue, with an inscription that reads, The New Colossus. There is also a lot of evidence to suggest that another ancient sun god named Mithra is the real inspiration behind the Statue of Liberty. Mithra is an ancient Persian deity of covenants, light, oath, justice, the sun, contracts, and friendship. In addition to being the divinity of contracts, Mithra is also seen as a judicial figure, an all-seeing protector of truth and the guardian of cattle, the harvest, and the waters. Mithra was famously recognized as being the god of light, whose cult spread from India in the east to as far west as Spain, Great Britain, and Germany. The first written mention of the Vedic Mithra dates to 1400 BC. His worship spread to Persia and after the defeat of the Persians by Alexander the Great throughout the Hellenic world in the 3rd and 4th centuries AD, the cult of Mithra carried and supported by the soldiers of the Roman Empire. It has long been recognized that there are many similarities 
between the initiation rituals and symbolism of the ancient Mithric mysteries and those of modern Freemasonry. Masonic writers have often professed to see many points of resemblance between Mithraism and Freemasonry. High-ranking Freemason Albert Pike once declared that Freemasonry is the modern heir of the ancient mysteries. I believe Mithra, Helios, Apollo, Ra, and many other sun gods are an earthly personification of the devil, the accuser himself, who has deceptively declared himself to humanity as a beacon of light and freedom. He is the entity behind the inspiration for Aleister Crowley's famous phrase, Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. The scripture warns us that the devil often presents himself as an angel of light and that we are not to marvel at him. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 14 through 15 And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. There is an old painting made in 1779 titled, Satan Summoning His Legion. The face of this painting has an uncanny similarity to the face of the Statue of Liberty and other ancient statues depicting different sun gods such as Helios, Mithra, and Apollo, which could all be personifications of the accuser himself with different names. This is possibly his earthly form. Not only is there a good chance that the Statue of Liberty represents Satan himself, but it also might have been made to commemorate a specific event that's found in the scriptures known as Satan's Little Season. After the events of Armageddon in the scriptures in the book of Revelation, an angel comes down with the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. This angel binds the devil with his chain and casts him in the bottomless pit for a thousand years and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. After the thousand years expire, he must be loosed a little season to deceive the nations one last time. I believe the thousand years possibly ended in the late 1700s, and the Statue of Liberty is paying an homage to this event. At the feet of the statue, we see a broken chain, perhaps symbolizing his release from the bottomless pit, with a torch in the right hand symbolizing the false light, and a plaque in the left hand that reads, the year 1776, which we are told is the date of the Declaration of Independence. The date on this plaque might be the date and declaration of his official release. As the Bible says, there is nothing new under the sun. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video was very fruitful. If you would like to support this channel, I do have a patron. The link for that is in the bio below. Thank you so much. Please comment your honest thoughts in the comment section below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Till next time.